The talk is to be given by Mr. Oz uh, Astalos from the Budapest University of Technology and Economics, once again in Hungary. And they will be talking about modeling aided design and interpretation of beam emission spectroscopy measurements on fusion devices. Yes, hi, thank you. Can you see my screen? Just a sec. We yeah, still see yeah, your desktop. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, okay. So, hi, thank you. Uh, I'm Ersh Astalos. I'm finishing my PhD literally one desk away from Shoma. And my topic is, well, that's actually quite a mouthful, but today I would like to focus on one particular uh, subject, and that would be the relevance of having good quality synthetic diagnostics. So my story starts in the scrape of layer, where we know that scrape of layer behavior affects uh, plasma performance, wall erosion, so on. And one contributing factor to that is the dynamics of filament, which are essentially uh, uh, breakaway intermittent coherent density structures, for the modeling of which there are a host of uh, plasma turbulence codes. And uh, for my work, I've been uh, working together with the guys from Denmark who've developed HESEL. That's a two-dimensional uh, uh, multi-fluid turbulence code. And here you can see in these short films like these blob propagations in these density fields going outward and dissipating and so on. Now for the measurement of these particular events, an ideal diagnostic system is for example, beam emission spectroscopy, right? because it has a uh, good enough uh, spatial and temporal resolution to get, get the job done. And uh, BES essentially starts with a high energy neutral beam being generated and then shot into the plasma, where through a host of collisional interactions, we actually get some emitted light. And then this particular light is being collected, in this case for ASDEX diagnostic, for example, you, it's, it's getting collected by an independent observation system. And then essentially, uh, density fluctuations are associated with light fluctuations, and that is how we get the measurement out of the system. So this, this is what I've been modeling. And to do that, I would like to define first what I think a synthetic diagnostic is, which I think it's important that it's a method that actually takes uh, plasma physics models into the same frame of reference as uh, ex ex actual, uh, actual measurements, and it should and has to account for all the relevant artifacts beholden to certain diagnostic. So I think that uh, uh, first principle plasma physics code validation should always have a synthetic diagnostic attached. So for beam emission spectroscopy, for me, it always starts with a collisional radiative model and then a, a rate equation system that is being solved, which calculates the light emission right here, corresponding to a density profile in a one-dimensional space, right? So after we've done that, we are going to take a whole lot of these one-dimensional beamlets, bundle them together, and that is how we shape essentially a three-dimensional emission system. And attached to that, we have a pinhole observation module, simple but efficient, that essentially calculates the expected photon count on each detector by integrating the emission at the intersection of beam and this cone of observation. Here you can see a practical example. This is for the K-star hydrogen beam, where we have a huge three-dimensional heating beam and then an observation system looking at it. And of course, it's being done in a realistic magnetic geometry, which is important as it is a significant, it, it poses significant artifact for this diagnostic. For the assessment of which I used fluctuation response analysis, which essentially tells me the spatial localization of density fluctuations right here, which appear on this particular detector, which in this case is quite neat. It's ideal, it's well localized. It's what we would want to have, right? Well, usually there's always a bot in these situations. Uh, more so when we take into account the alignment of line of sight and magnetic field line. If this is unfavorable, then essentially this particular very happy situation turns into this nasty one where the spatial localization essentially degrades with almost an order of magnitude because the misalignment is, well, it's, it's high, yeah? Another artifact of beam emission spectroscopy comes from the atomic physics processes, yeah? So it has to do with the fact that there is a depopulation time of the observed level, which has a strong density dependence. Therefore, it's quite natural to see that detector pixels in the edge plasma are well localized, and those in the scrape off layer, well, less so. So this is also an effect that has to be counted for. Putting all of these together, here we have a two-dimensional slab of, of, let's say, hazel pro filament propagating outward, the projection of the ASDEX observation system. What I have to note, though, is that the density and temperature fields here from Hiesel are extended along the field line within the beam geometry, so no big harm, to uh, actually assess all of these artifacts as before mentioned. And here you can see the temporal evolution of the radial density fields, nice blobs propagating outwards, and then the smoothened out version of the same, 
were as seen from the perspective of the diagnostic, and we noticed that it smoothened out because of the before mentioned artifact. So if you start to have a look at some minor simplistic, uh, let's say, uh, have a peek at some statistical properties of these signals, then you have to note that these dots here are essentially synthetic signals for various models. And what we want or what we expect is actually that they should be uh, close or hugging this particular curve given by theoretical modeling or theoretical computations, which it actually does, and we like it. However, experimental uh, procedure for the same or for the corresponding uh, signals are actually pushed downwards to this particular box region, and they show a systematic disc discrepancy. So this brings me to uh, BES artifact number three, which has to do with noise modeling. So um, here you see, for example, the expected synthetic light signal with black, right? And then we take this signal and we apply for any type of detector system, all the contributing relevant noise factors to it, there are quite a lot of them. And then we get this green dot representation, which is the noisy signal. It's not a favorable one, but it shows you the point how it changes. Now, if we start to scale this particular noise and we take one ideal setup, like just, just as before, and we start adding more and more noise to the signal, then that essentially pushes these signal values down towards the experimental box, which pushes us in the uh, direction of a good agreement, which we well, it's bad for the signal, but it's good for us. A rather more, a better representation of that can, see, can be seen here, where we are looking at the radial skewness evolution. The orange one gives us, let's see, the expected skewness, quite high. The blue one, the experimental one, the discrepancy. And then the green one is the noisy synthetic signal, showing us a good agreement. And we see these agreements if we apply any other type of signal analysis as well. So in conclusion, I would like to leave with one note, which is I feel that a good synthetic diagnostic is necessary if we want to have a proper validation of first principle plasma physics codes. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much, Osh, for the wonderful presentation.